annual plants are how we farmed for 10,000 years. It's the only thing we've had for grains. We all need to recognize that we're in the early stages maybe of a great transition. And on the horizon, we recognize that we're going to have to have an ecological worldview, uh, that the industrial mind uh, can no longer be accommodated as a result of everything from climate change to the end of a lot of fossil carbon to whatever. We can now see perennials on the horizon. And since we can see perennials on the horizon, we can now uh, imagine bringing those processes to the, of the wild to the farm because they're just going to keep coming up. So, uh, if we're to solve the 10,000 year old problem of agriculture, we got to get perennial grain crops. Kernza and other um, uh, perennial grasses, uh, we're crossing those with wheat and some species related to wheat, um, uh, like triticale. Uh, we're uh, mixing up the, the genes of these species with each other through hybridization and, and selection to um, develop uh, what we're calling perennial wheat, and it will, to some degree, be grown. Uh, in, the, in the type of environment that uh, uh, annual wheat is grown in now. The one that is uh, farthest along right now is a species known as uh, intermediate wheat grass. It's a, a distant cousin of, of wheat uh, that um, we, we're working now on domesticating. We've been through several cycles of selection and our, uh, our intermediate wheat grass breeder who has uh, given it the much nicer sounding name Kernza uh, is um, is predicting that probably within about 10 years, the, uh, the yield and seed size and general uh, uh, cropness of, uh, of this plant will be to the point that it uh, can be used in, in production. Um, a lot of people have asked, will people accept perennial grains? Are they going to eat them? Yes, they will. Uh, we already have been milling our kerns of flour that's based on intermediate wheatgrass. They make the best pancakes I've ever had. Uh, great in biscuits and cookies. If you're going to bake something like bread that rises, you have to mix with another flour, but they're awesome. And the nutrient content that we've had on some, we've tested three different plots, and the nutrition analysis was off the charts. It was so much healthier than whole wheat in many categories. So, very nutritional. So yeah, I think people will love it. It's, it's a healthy alternative. Uh, in addition, we're working on uh, perennial sorghum. Uh, green sorghum is uh, the world's uh, fifth staple uh, cereal crop in, in acreage and production. These big plants behind me are um, hybrids. They're the direct uh, um, result of pollinating two different sorghum plants. Uh, an annual uh, green sorghum plant and uh, a perennial wild uh, relative of the green sorghum plant. But the perennial parent of this one was the product of a, uh, several rounds of breeding, so that's why this, this plant is uh, shorter and with larger seed and a more uh, compact head. We're working with people in other areas on developing uh, perennial rice for the tropics and uh, perennial corn, uh, probably first for the tropics, but eventually even for uh, temperate areas. We're also domesticating perennial sunflower species that are native to Kansas and much of the uh, middle of the country here. This is our new, brand new seed storage facility. Uh, the boxes in there on the shelves contain uh, thousands of small packets of seed, ones that we need to keep for research to use as parents in subsequent years or uh, simply as a gene pool that could be useful in, in breeding in, in the future. Splash! If we stop with the perennial monoculture, we've missed half the point. See, the perennial monoculture, I mean, the other part is to have that species diversity. Uh, 
and take advantage of the uh, mutualities. Uh, you know, for instance, you have uh, legumes along with a microbe will will fix bio give you biological nitrogen fixation. So, uh, and there are a lot of those sort of efficiencies there that contributed to tight nutrient cycling and so on. So we're looking not just at perennial monoculture, we're looking at perennial polyculture. Perennial polyculture is an agricultural system using multiple types of perennial crops in the same space for the benefit of plant life, soil quality, and ecological health. Uh, we did an experiment several years ago where we took sorghum and sunflowers and soybeans and corn, all things that mature about the same time. Uh, we planted them mixed in a field and then harvested them together. We had to set the combines uh, blade down a little bit so it would pick up the soybeans and we had to set the blower so it didn't blow the sunflower seeds right out of the back of the truck. Uh, but it harvested beautifully with a standard combine that's available now. We took it to a mill where they used centrifugal force seed sorters and we had no trouble separating the seeds. So this is something that can be done with technology that exists now that would only improve as we develop our grains. So the reward goes primarily to the farmer and the landscape rather than the suppliers of inputs. So we're talk, when we talk about moving agriculture from an extractive to a renewable economy, uh, I think it'll just be a compelling alternative. So uh, that's essentially our story. Uh, and I think it goes beyond that in that if we don't get sustainability in agriculture first, it's not going to happen. Because agriculture ultimately will have the discipline of ecology, evolutionary biology standing behind it. The materials sector, the industrial sector, doesn't have any discipline to inform it. We can begin that journey best by using the ecosystem as the conceptual tool in agriculture, and that's going to require the perennials if that's to make a go of it. Cool.